Thank you for joining us today while I talk about in-machine tool measurement. My name is John Einberger. I'm product line manager for the Horizontal Machining Centers here at Makino. Coming to you today from our headquarters for North America in Mason, Ohio. We are going to have the ability to uh, have two-way dialogue answering any questions that you might come up with. In your screen that you're looking at right now in the upper right hand corner in the area where I've got it circled, uh, there's a chat function. We have people monitoring the chat questions as they come in today. So feel free to ask questions and we'll address them here at the end of today's presentation. So let me lay out the agenda uh, for today. Um, first and foremost, why would somebody consider doing in-machine tool measurement? What are the pros of doing so? Why would you consider doing that from the standpoint of adding uh, more content to your machine tool? We'll break it down into what I'm gonna call high precision solutions that meet certain uh, aspects and criteria and requirements of that style measurement system, but also offer up some high value solutions where maybe what you need from an information standpoint is a little bit more limited, but you're looking for uh, value in the overall equation. So let's start out with why to consider. Why would somebody want to do in-machine tool measurement? First and foremost, the potential exists to eliminate manual tool setting. Basically, allow your machine tool to do a little bit more work for you. Bring that tool into the machine. It's already going to be assembled into the holder. It's going to be clamped in the spindle. It's going to be representative of exactly how that tool is going to see the workpiece and eliminate uh, doing that offline and also eliminate a bit of variability that goes with checking it offline versus checking it clamped up in the machining center. It eliminates uh, data entry errors. Think about, for example, you check the tool offline, it's 320 millimeters long, you bring it over to the machine, instead of 320, you get momentarily distracted, type in 230 millimeters instead, you've got a 90 millimeter mismatch. In this particular case, the first time you use that tool, it's probably going to go 90 millimeters too close to the part relative to where you want it to be. The in-machine tool measurement capability would eliminate that possibility. Really, the biggest driver that we see on a day-to-day -day basis is improvement in process control. Breakage uh, detection of tools that are used in process. Uh, for the higher precision uh, applications that we see um, from the standpoint of contour machining and things of that nature, compensation for tool wear as it's used throughout its life in the uh, cutting process in the machine tool. And also the ability, if you use uh, tool life monitoring, spare tool selection, the ability to take a tool that ends its useful life replace it in process, in cycle with a, with a uh, duplicate tool to be able to match up where that tool left off that's leaving the process with a new tool coming in. And think about that in very high precision machining applications where you're doing something like a mold cavity or something where a mismatch line would be very um, detrimental to the overall functionality of that component that you're creating. Overall, big umbrella over everything, reduction of scrap, reduction of cost. So let's go to the first um, subset of these, if you will, the high precision solutions. Really, you're gonna be looking at very high resolution data that's highly repeatable. Data on the um, spectrum of what you might expect to get from your high precision CMM, but inside the machine tool itself translated to that cutting tool. It's gonna be typically a device that's always in the machining area, that's always accessible during the cutting process. A good illustration here shown uh, a pair of lasers pointed at each other, a sender and a receiver, if you will, uh, on a uh, what I'll call a goalpost style setup. Again, very accessible in the machining area, very accessible during the cutting process itself. But before we get into the lasers, let's uh, start out with the more um, simple style, the contact style, high precision solution. A Little bit closer shot here. So what measurements can you get uh, from the standpoint of this high precision data? Uh, really what you're gonna be looking at from the standpoint of capability with the contact style systems, tool length, tool diameter, the two things that immediately pop to mind. Bear in mind that even with the contact style solutions, that tool oftentimes is gonna be rotating, typically in the direction opposite of what your cutting process is gonna rotate the tool. So tool rotating, you've got the dynamics of being able to look, uh, for instance, on an end mill at multiple flutes to really get that diameter composite, but also be able to look at that, again, from that dynamic standpoint. 
Broken tool detection certainly comes into play with this style system in the machine, as well as the ability to not only measure that length and diameter, but look at it with the very fine data that you collect and use it as an overall process control that compensates for tool wear. What if you need more data though, beyond what that contact style system can uh, typically provide? That's really gonna push you into what I showed kind of at the onset here, the laser style or non-contact system. Again, very high precision data uh, coming back to the user. What does it add? Well, first and foremost, the ability to measure micro-sized tools. So think of that 5,000 inch diameter drill that you don't wanna have even though you're controlling the motion, you don't necessarily want that tool to be contacting anything inside of that, that machine with the exception of the workpiece itself. So the laser has the ability to measure, again, very accurately, micro tools, but also <clears throat> has the ability to measure profile. Uh, illustration here is a ball end mill be able to measure that profile. So if you have degradation over time, say for instance of something that might be a critical radius on that tool relative to what you need your workpiece to be, but also further expansion upon that to be able to apply this to multi-diameter form tools, where again, maybe the form is very, very critical to the overall functionality of the component that you're manufacturing. And then finally for multi-insert tools, the ability to detect different inserts on the tool to look at the integrity of them on an insert by insert basis. So again, very precise data coming back, uh, a lot of usability of it, but you have to consider overall what's the cost of that data and is that something that really is justifiable in your process or is the cost and the data higher both than what you really need. So what do, what do I mean by cost? Really two areas to consider. The capital cost certainly up front of installing that device in the machine, any additional maintenance that might go with it, any additional uh, cleanliness or housekeeping, but also cycle time. Since that device is accessible in the machine, it's in the machining area, the measurement has to happen in the machine with the tool in the spindle. So think about it from the standpoint, cycle time being a composite of cut time, non-cut time, but also that measurement time, the, the combination of those three in this case makes up your total cycle time. So certainly it will have an impact. Probably not a big deal if the components that you're machining are very high value added, very long cycle time. That measurement time, not to overstate the case, is relatively small. In that case, relative to everything else that makes up the total cycle time. But in that high volume production scenario where maybe you don't need that very, very tightly controlled data, that measurement time could end up being a very large portion of the overall total cycle time. So let's look at some alternatives to the high precision solution. Let's look at the high value alternatives. So again, really focusing on limited to no impact to the overall cycle time. Eliminate completely that measurement time, but still get the data that you need uh, to be able to add process control to the overall solution. In addition, minimization of the capital cost, shrink that down, simpler system, or maybe it's even a system that's standard with the base machine. But we'll explore those options here in a moment. Very likely what you need to understand though with the high value solutions, very limited capability relative to kind of the open page that I laid out for all the data that you collect with the high precision solutions, much more limited data really in the form of giving you the ability to detect that broken tool, that BTS is gonna be the data that you're often limited to in this case. As we talked about before, contact style is uh, very common in the marketplace. In this particular circumstance, this is a solution that Makino had offered for many years what we call the broken tool sensor outside the machining area, big long word, uh, botsoma is what we call it internally. So what's happening here as this cycles through and through, a tool changes out of the spindle, now into the tool magazine side. So the measurement, instead of happening in the machining area, is happening out in the tool magazine. The next tool is in position in the spindle, getting ready to enter into its feed move. So the tool changes out, the device contacts the tool tip, the determination is made whether the tool is broken or not. And if it's not, then that next tool that's already in position 
enters into the cutting cycle. So again, elimination of that uh, uh, impact of cycle time by taking that measurement external. So what concerns exist with this style solution? Uh, really a lot of what we talked about before, the impact on very small tools. If a customer is using, even in a production environment, and we have seen this, particularly in the semiconductor equipment manufacturing arena, very, very small drills, uh, 10 thousandths of an inch, uh, maybe even smaller than that, solid carbide, high performance, but again, concern over any impact to that tool causing damage, uh, shortening the tool life, what have you. Much more common in the production arena, the use of ceramics, the use of PCD, uh, very fragile tool edges, edges that are very hard, but also very fragile and really don't like impact in any way, shape or form. So the alternative certainly exists here, the non-contact style. Uh, the solution that Makino offers is what we call Vision BTS, uh, basically using cameras to look at the tools as they come again out of the machine. This is over on the Tool Magazine side to look for tool breakage. System consists of a backlight, a background, which typically is going to be the backside of the shutter door and the camera itself. So tool change executes, take a picture of the tool. That next tool is already in the spindle, ready to go in place, goes right into cycle, zero impact to the overall machining time. Advantages of a system like this, quick confirmation, a tenth of a second operation. Again, that all happens while that next tool is in its transit mode down to pick up the cut. And no risk of tool damage on top of that a very simple system, only one moving part in the overall system. So as a summary, high precision, high value, a lot of data, limited data stream, contact style, probably the lowest cost versus non-contact, maybe higher capital cost, depending on how the machine tool builder uh, packages a system like this. But again, a whole array of options, a whole array of costs and benefits. I would like to extend a thank you today to our partners at both Bloom and Renishaw. They made available to us uh, for use in this presentation today some very good supporting imagery. Again, we would like to say thank you to them for supporting this effort. And at this point in time, let's open it up to questions. Uh, we'll take a look at the chat, see what's come in, and address them on a question-by-question uh, -question basis. Thank you. All right, so uh, let's, uh, before we turn it over to questions, we've got, uh, I see one popping in right now. Um, let's take a moment and review the uh, poll question. So again, the question was, uh, do you currently use in-machine tool measurement in your manufacturing process? Yes, no. Uh, even split right down the middle, interesting enough. Um, I guess my expectation was, was that we would see uh, maybe a very small percentage of people using that right now, but uh, like I say, even split right on right on down uh, down the middle. So um, I see a question came in. Uh, what happens when you find a broken tool? Uh, good question. Uh, it kind of depends on the way that the machine tool is set up. The way that we do it at Makino, um, it ties in uh, the broken tool sensing ties in with a number of other systems that are standard on the machine, uh, specifically uh, what I'm gonna call spare tool selection. So if we think about a machine that's running um, in an automated environment, uh, a lot of times uh, with automation, uh, with a cell control running the master uh, program that, many, that, that manages basically all the part flow through the cell, if we have a broken tool that's detected in process, very typically what we're gonna do is flag that part as a bad part, as a reject, and go through a, um, a clean-out process, if you will, using the automation to remove that load of parts from the fixture, to put them into uh, typically into gauge reject conveyors where they can be inspected by the operators. Uh, maybe, um, let's just say hypothetically, there are four parts that then get removed from the work holding fixture, sent to the gauge reject conveyors. Uh, they can be inspected. Let's just say three out of the four in this case are fine but not complete. They can be typically reintroduced into the cell at a later date, continue through the manufacturing process. Tying in with one of the standard control features, spare tool select, 
what we'll do if the uh, customer uh, chooses to set up spare tools in the machine and a spare tool for the broken tools identified, we'll pick up the manufacturing process right there. Um, actually pick up the manufacturing process starting with the next new load of parts uh, coming into that work holding fixture in the uh, automated environment. In more of a manual load environment, uh, again, it's going to flag that uh, part as a reject. Typically, it's going to stop production on the machine and then issue an alarm calling somebody's attention over to go take a look at the situation and recover from there. So a lot of different ways to handle it. A lot of it is based on customer preference. Um, fully manual intervention is possible. Fully automated intervention is possible. Uh, or basically a mixture of the two. One other question I see that has come in, uh, will, uh, will you be able to use the vision style broken tool sensor to replace an offline presetter? Um, the way that we set it up, no. Uh, it's uh, looking for a gross uh, deviation of tool length. By gross, I mean in the, uh, in the uh, two to four millimeter range of what that tool checks when it's checked uh, real time versus what the expectation is based on data that's in the tool detail screen. So it's not going to replace the offline presetter. It's not something that you use for precision tool setting. But again, bear in mind that that's uh, kind of that uh, more high value solution where it's really doing the tool checking to ensure that process control outside of the uh, machining process and not uh, taking up cycle time. Okay, so those are the questions that I have seen popped up. Again, uh, thank you very much for attending. Uh, we appreciate always your time and uh, thank you for your interest in the subject and in Makino.